After nine long months of waiting to meet your baby, they have finally arrived. And while you're overwhelmed with excitement, it's hard not to sometimes find yourself in a spiral of worry and anxiety as you try and figure out how to keep your baby safe. Hi, I'm Dr. Mona Amin, a board certified pediatrician and mom, and I've been right where you are, trying to navigate life as a new parent and at the same time, wanting to keep your baby safe. Motherly, Target, and I are providing expectant and new parents with a one-stop shop for all things safety. We will discuss things like safe sleep, safety in newborn feeding, and car seat safety, as well as some of my favorite products at Target to help you along the way. Make sure to share this with your partner, if you have one, and any loved ones who will help take care of your baby. When it comes to safe sleep, remember the following. The safest place for baby is on their back on a firm, flat surface, such as in a crib or a bassinet that is free of any soft items such as blankets, bumpers, stuffed animals, toys, or pillows. This is recommended for the first year of life to provide the safest possible sleep environment while you rest as well. And we know rest can sometimes be hard to come by early on. An example of a bassinet is the Halo bassinet. Sitting devices such as car seats, strollers, swings, infant carriers, and infant slings are not recommended for routine sleep in the hospital or at home. Routine sleep means full naps where you are not completely watching them. These devices put their neck in a position that is unsafe. If they fall asleep in these, move them to a flat surface to finish their sleep session. Swaddles are safe to use and I recommend using them if your baby needs them. Newborns have a strong startle reflex, which is where their arms and sometimes legs startle at sounds or even in their sleep. For some babies, this can wake them up from their sleep. Consider using a swaddle if it works for your baby. If your infant is swaddled, always place them on their back. Avoid the use of any weighted swaddles or sleep sacks, as this is a risk for their safety while sleeping. When your baby begins to roll, it's time to remove the swaddle. Some of my favorites are the Halo sleep sack, or the Swaddle Me. Pacifiers can also help with safe sleep, but it is not an absolute necessity. My favorite is the Philips Avent Soothie. Remember to also avoid using any pacifier clips while sleeping. When it comes to feeding safety, we'll discuss safe storage of breast milk or formula, selecting a bottle, bottle cleaning, and safety while feeding. For breast milk, freshly expressed or pumped milk can be used within four hours at room temperature, within four days in the fridge, and within six months in the freezer. Up to 12 months is okay too, but six months is best to preserve qualities of breast milk. Thawed breast milk that was previously frozen should be used within one to two hours. If put in the fridge, you can use within one day. Once breast milk is thawed, you should never refreeze it again for use later. If your baby drank pumped milk from a bottle and didn't finish it, you can use that milk within two hours of the feeding if kept at room temperature, which is 77 degrees or cooler. For formula safety, wash your hands before preparing infant formula. Use water from a safe source when preparing powdered formula and follow the instructions for mixing. We want to avoid overusing water. Formula does not need to be warm prior to giving it to your baby. But if they prefer it to be warm, you can use a bottle warmer or place the bottle under running warm water, taking care to keep the water from getting into the bottle or on the nipple. Put a couple drops of infant formula on the back of your hand to see if it is too hot. Use formula within two hours of preparation. If you prepare a formula and your baby has not drank from that bottle, you can store it in the fridge for 24 hours. Make sure to discard of any formula that is left in the bottle after feeding your baby. Also make sure to store formula in a cool, dry indoor place. Avoid vehicles, garages, or outdoors where it can get too hot. And always check the packaging for expiration dates. When selecting a bottle, choose one that is the right flow for your baby. Most bottles have different nipple sizes that grow with your child. If your baby seems to be sucking hard to get the milk out, you will need to go up on the size. If they are drinking and the milk is dribbling out of their mouth due to the high flow, you will need to go down on the nipple size. Some of my favorites include Como Tomo or Dr. Brown's. For cleaning and sterilizing, you only need to sterilize new bottles or after an illness or things like thrush. There is no need to sterilize after every use. 
To sterilize, you can use a bottle sterilizer or put all parts of the bottle into a large saucepan, cover it with water, bring the water to a boil, and let it boil for five minutes. For regular cleaning, clean with gentle dish soap and a bottle brush. Make sure to get any milk residue that can remain in the nipple, and then air dry it on a rack. Here are some of my favorite products for bottle cleaning. For safety while feeding, consider the following. Don't add anything to your baby's formula like extra water or rice. Sometimes your child's clinician may recommend adding rice for reflux, but this needs to be cleared with your pediatrician. Always feed your baby when they are showing signs of hunger cues, such as rooting, moving their lips or mouth towards your breast or a bottle, or putting their hands in their mouth and smacking their lips. Avoid overfeeding your baby by following these hunger cues. When your baby's a newborn, don't prop bottles while feeding. Hold the bottle yourself, and as they get older into infancy, they may hold it as well in your presence. Propping bottles can increase choking risk and cause overfeeding. If breast or chest feeding, make sure to have a lactation consultant on hand for your comfort. They can help troubleshoot any concerns that you may have. When it comes to car seats, I want to go over some of the biggest missteps I see when it comes to newborn car seat safety. First, you want to choose a car seat that fits your car. Some popular options include an infant car seat, such as the Baby Trend, or a convertible seat like Graco. Remember that there is no best car seat. The best car seat is the one that is properly installed and fits your vehicle. Some families will start with a convertible seat that can be switched to forward facing when their child is old enough. However, these seats are a little bit bulkier than infant car seats. So if you plan on frequent trips and want to move the car seat to a stroller system, an infant seat may be more ideal. An infant seat may also be optimal for babies who don't meet the minimum weight requirements for a convertible seat. They are also smaller and come with carrying handles for easy transport. Your baby will outgrow an infant seat and eventually need to move to a convertible seat. So consider what works best for the weight of your baby. Install your car seat rear facing before you get to the hospital. The hospital staff will not help you install your seat nor can they help place your baby into the car seat. Use the help of a local child passenger safety technician or a CPST to assure your car seat is installed correctly. Rear facing is the safest way for a baby and toddler to ride. And if you miss seeing their face, you can use a mirror like this one. Make sure to check the recline when rear facing. In rear facing, the car seat has a recline bubble that should indicate proper placement. Make sure you get guidance from a CPST to confirm that this is correct. Also make sure that the car seat does not move back and forth when you shake it. While rear facing, the shoulder straps should be even with or just below your child's shoulders. When your baby is securely placed, do a pinch test to make sure that the straps are not too loose. Try to pinch the shoulder belt between your thumb and forefinger. If there is fabric that is able to be pinched, the straps are too loose and it needs to be tightened. You also want to make sure that the chest clip is in the right position. Make sure the chest clip is even with the armpits just above the nipple line. If it's too high, this can cause injury to their neck. And if it's too low, the straps can fall off or the clip can injure their abdomen during an accident. Avoid using bulky clothing or jackets and then putting on the straps. This will leave too much space between their actual body and the straps. Put them in without bulky coats and lay the coat over them after they are securely fastened if they need it for warmth. And lastly, make sure to keep your child rear facing as long as the car seat allows for their height and weight. This is the most ideal way for them to ride in the event of an accident. Having a new baby is an exciting time and here at Motherly and Target, we hope you feel more equipped with the tools to keep your baby safe so you can enjoy those special moments with your baby as they grow. Thanks for joining us today and congratulations.